Hey, this is Simeon, and today we're stepping back into the halls of real samples. And we're going to be taking a look at an Austrian harpsichord built in 1671. And this is the type of harpsichord that is probably just like the ones that Mozart used in his compositions. So that's what makes it really interesting is to be able to have under your fingers, it's just like touching a piece of history. So come along as we discover the Austrian harpsichord. Okay, we're back. And so like all of real samples instruments, they're, they're really a, not a lot of frills, but the quality of the samples is there and captured beautifully. So here you see, I've got the full version of contact open and you have the four foot stops, the eight foot stops, and you have a combination of eight and four, uh, which gives you a, a stacked. And we're gonna take a look at those. You also have equal and velati temperament, which is interesting. So I'm gonna just pull up the four foot equal temperament. And let's just, uh, we're just gonna take a quick listen through all of these. So very high pitched. And there are four round robins. And you also have re release samples to capture that nuance. And the reason you need multiple samples is that the harpsichord, if you play the same sample over and over again, you miss the realism. And so having those multiple samples just give you that, uh, especially doing trills like it just makes a big difference in the sound. So what a beautiful, clean sound. And these uh, were sampled using some handmade U47 type microphones. So this is the eight foot. And you're gonna hear it, it's gonna sound an octave lower than what I just played. Very rich. rich sound. Now let's combine them together. Now this is not just taking the four and the eight and just kind of stacking it together. These are actually separate recordings that uh, use uh, the eight and four together. So you get a natural sound. I'm not a harpsichord player, but I do play one on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just like not being trained in an instrument, but yet being exposed to how beautiful the sounds are, it, uh, for me, it creates such a curiosity and an interest in learning as much as I can uh, and watching real uh, harpsichord performances being done because it's just has such a unique sound. Let's go to, uh, let's go to G. Just very rich. One of the interesting things about real samples libraries is the, 
they want to always uh, preserve what it would be like to play the original instrument. And with that in mind, they give us the Velati temperament as well as the equal temperament. Now, the Velati temperament has just uh, almost has little micro tunings every once in a while. Uh, and we're going to take a listen to that. Also, uh, they also give us different tunings. So they give us the standard 440 tuning, but then they give us the tuning at 392. And, you know, back in the day, back in Mozart's day, uh, the tuning, the pitch was way below what we're used to today. So, um, and then it, over the years, it kept getting higher. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, in the small settings of uh, quartets and the the small, uh, the harpsichord and that kind of thing, uh, you know, it was only for a small group of people and, you know, no PA, no uh, amplification. And so as the crowds got larger, uh, they found that if you tune, especially like the violins and stringed instruments, if you tune the instrument a little bit higher, then it would cut through, it would project a little bit more. And so you'll, you notice that over a period of time that the, the tuning kept getting a little bit higher and higher. And then we settled on 440 uh, as pretty much a standard. And you know there are still some orchestras that uh, tune a little bit differently. So let's take a look at uh, the, the Velati temperament as opposed to equal temperament. And we're gonna take a look at the tunings as well. Okay, so you can see where they've given you a folder uh, with 440 and the original pitch, which is 392. So I'm gonna load up the 440 uh, equal temperament of the eight and four foot stops. And let's just go to the key of C. Now let's switch over to the Velati temperament and still at 440. And let me just run up the scale and you can hear the difference uh, in those little fine tunings. You just hear just some of those notes are just tuned just a little bit different. Now let's just go to the equal temperament. I'll do the same thing. And you hear, you hear the difference. Now let's go to the original pitch of 392. Let's load up the um, eight and four equal temperament. Now this is in 392. And see that's still in the key of C. It sounds like it's almost a whole step down. Now let's go to the Velati temperament. Just little subtle changes. And this is at 392 in the original pitch. It's very subtle. So they tuned the, the harpsichords and keyboards of that era down a little bit to decrease the, the actual torque so that the, the strings and all of that energy just wouldn't pull the instrument apart. You know, and since the uh, these instruments are, there's they're not very complicated, no GUI and that kind of thing, you're just getting the pure uh, samples. What I like to do I love to go into this uh, wrench uh, here. And let's go back to the uh, 440 sounds and equal temperament. Yeah, so it's really cool. So I love to go just open this wrench and you can see what makes up 
these instruments here. It just uncovers a new world of possibilities that you can explore. We have like these different rack effects. And so I just kind of discovered this, uh, you know, because I would always go through and kind of click through these, but you have some factory presets here. Let's just check, uh, check this out, uh, factory preset. Now this is contact six that I'm using here. So you see, we've got an EQ saturator flanger and uh, some reverb. So let's check this out. taken the harpsichord it, it's just taken the harpsichord to another level <laughs> let's uh, try another preset let's go lo-fi acoustic drum radio signals let's check oh yeah so you got some lo-fi stuff going on So that pretty much crushes it a little bit. Uh, that's pretty wild. So let's just, uh, let's disable this stuff. Yeah, that lo-fi. Now let's just go to the main instrument effects and see what we have here. Okay. Saturday limit, let's see. So yes. <laughs> See, so you've got a lot of saturation type of effects there. Let me just close this out. And what I like to do, um, let's just go and add, you know, I'm always going like with the delays. Let's go to the replica delay. And let's increase the time or decrease it. And let's put a reverb on there too. And, uh, yeah. Let's see what, what else we can do. Let's put a modulation effect in there. Let's go to flare. takes something from the 1600s and brings it into today's possibilities. Yeah, this is not your uh, <laughs> this is not your typical harpsichord. So it just opens up a beautiful uh, possibilities to experiment with those. And then if you find something that you like, you can always go and save this something uh, in your library. You can pull it up later. Make sure you check out all the links in the description. What a wonderful opportunity again to share He's uh, really interesting instruments with you. Anytime I get an email from Mural Samples, I know that it's going to be really interesting and another exploration where we can take a look at uh, these beautiful classic instruments that have shaped the music that we love to listen to today. So until next time, this is Simeon, and thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.